On today's program, I'm going to eat most of the typical plates of Ecuador on one corner in Ridgewood, Queens. Morrocho, pan con nata, encebollado. I might try ceviche. Welcome to Ridgewood, Queens. Welcome back to Eating with Robert. Cue the music. You know, I had so many ideas of how I was going to prove this show in terms of like the technical things, you know, months of planning. Just gone totally to shit. St. Nicholas and Gates Avenue. And every weekend I've noticed that a bunch of Ecuadorian food trucks roll up. Some people say that it's Quito, Guayaquil, and New York City are the three biggest Ecuadorian cities. Cuenca. 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 The frontier for most Ecuadorian immigrants in New York has been Jackson Heights and Corona. But over the last 20 years, 30 years, a lot of them have been immigrating to Bushwick. And of course, that's now spilling over into Ridgewood, Queens. Though I actually just found out this food truck's been here for 15 years. So what the fuck do I know? So I'm here to try to explain to you a little bit, what are the typical dishes of Ecuador? If you want to go eat Ecuadorian food, then you should, you know, use this as a guide. I'm soaked, so let's go shoot this episode. <laughs> Vamos. Hola, mi nombre es Mercedes. Estamos aquí en los antojitos ecuatorianos. Antojitos ecuatorianos son comidas típicas de nuestro país, Ecuador. Hay comida de la costa y de la sierra. Eh, de la sierra tenemos la fritada, el hornado, morcillas. ¿El carrito? ¿El sí, carrito, el carrito cuántos años funciona? Como más de 15 años. Más de 15 en esta años. Esquina. En esta esquina, sí. We just got done talking to Mercedes. Explain to me a little bit about Morrocho and a little bit about pan con nata. I couldn't understand everything. I'm still taking Spanish lessons. They're not what I expected. It's a little bit like somewhere between atole and straight up arroz con dulce, or rice pudding. It's like a thick milk drink with chunks of rice in it flavored with spices and cinnamon. It's perfect for today. The color matches the sky. The warmth is warming me up. I feel good. I feel better. All right, let's pull up with the pan con nata. No idea what's going on. Best I can tell, this is like a butter. I might have to go ask them what's going on. Pan con nata. Pan con nata. Pan con nata. Es el pan típico del Ecuador que se le pone dentro. La leche se forma la nata y eso es lo que es una especie de cremita como mantequilla. Ya, muy, ya lo va a probar. <laughs> I don't understand. Nata is like the congealed kind of stuff that comes from boiling milk. So that kind of combination is giving me this sort of like bagel and butter type thing. Morrocho in the books, pan con nata in the books. Let's try the hornado. El hornado es un plato típico de la sierra. Eh, es el pernil del cerdo eh, hecho al horno. Y se sirve acompañado con mote, papitas, ensaladas y maíz tostado. This is crazy, by the way. We have a little bit of aji on here. Aji is the Ecuadorian Peruvian word for chili. So this is like a chili sauce here. Listen, I'm Puerto Rican. I've eaten a lot of pernil in my day. This is totally different. You know, pickled red onion has a little bit of acidity. The aji is a great compliment. Uh, then this crispy cuero here, the skin. Are you kidding me? I think Peru must have a very strong tourism board because if we think of Peru as like cuisine central, you know? In Peru, they have like a hundred types of potatoes. Ecuador's right next door. They have mad potatoes too. You know, put some respect on Ecuadorians' potatoes' names. <laughs> Let's head right next door and we'll try some typical dishes from the coast. It's gonna be a short walk. <laughs> Cut. Estamos in Gates Avenue con San Nicolas, esquina de Fubasal. Yo generalmente tengo aquí más comida de la costa, como es el encebollado de pescado, ceviche de pescado, concha, camarones, corvina frita. Es comida de costa. He aprendido de la familia. Okay, right in front of the Colorado food truck. I've got a number of delights in front of me. I'm very excited. We had to take a little bit of a rain break, but I'm glad because I got my appetite. Actually, just before I do this, I want to try the cuaquer. Cuaquer is like a, a typical Ecuadorian drink that has a mix of passion fruit and oats, right? Maracuya y avena. Yeah the best cuaquero you can find in New York. All right, I'm gonna dive into the encebollado. I've had this dish before, but I've never had it here. El encebollado. De, de decir como lo hago es un poco largo, pero, eh, pero lo que sí es a base de pescado, yuca y especias. Mm. Pero el encebollado es lo más natural posible. Se dice, o oh, nosotros acostumbramos, si estamos amanecidos con resaca, si puede decir, o sea, lo mejor es un enceviche o un buen encebollado caliente. Me sabe bueno. 
Sí. Pero ¿qué, qué es la ritual? Limón, muy poco. Ok, sí, muy poco. Ok. Si le gusta el picante, un, solo un chin de picante. ¿Un chin? Sí, nada más. Y si le gusta mostaza, pues un toquecito de mostaza. Sí. En especial a mí me lo gusta comérmelo así, porque es como el encebollado se lo debe comer y como te sabe. Ok. Sí. Mm. The acidity really brings it up a notch. Super amazing. But what really comes through is the flavor of fish. Really fresh fish. Like, it's a really savory flavor that just spreads across your tongue. You get the taste of the ocean. And honestly, the mustard, incredible. All right, let's try the ceviche. El ceviche, mi ceviche es, es camarón pelado a mano, no es frisado. Es camarón pelado a mano y, y limpio a mano. Es, es un ceviche artesanal. I've never had Ecuadorian ceviche. The first thing I notice is how much liquid there is in it. He mixed in mustard and ketchup, and the rest is a proprietary secret. Wow, this is just yummy food. The shrimps are perfectly cooked, and everything is really, really cold, which is important. So I add a little bit of oil and lemon. It makes a big difference, not just because of the acidity, but because it becomes much more rich. You know, like a ramen has an oil on top. It makes it a bit more dense, a little bit heavier. It's so good. It's just great. And finally, I went off-piste. I got the seco de chivo. You know, like most Hispanic cultures, there's a strong tradition of getting stews with rice, and we usually call stews guisos. But in Ecuador, they call stews secos, right? So dry. You gotta have the sopa and the seco, no? The two parts. This is a goat stew, did I say that? If you've had any kind of Latin American stew, this is similar, but it has a really, really strong, savory kind of decadent quality. Sweet, salty, goaty. And as usual, all Latin Americans make the best rice. Maybe you've walked by here before and you haven't known what to order because you're not familiar with Ecuadorian food. I was the same way until like the last month where I became obsessed with eating Ecuadorian food. And now I feel like I have a little bit of a good template. Like if you're really hungry, you can get a plate with rice and carne asada or goat stew. If you're hungover, <laughs> you can get the ensamoyado. And if you want something really fresh and bright on a hot day, you have to get this ceviche, man. And don't forget to get a quack app too. Let's wrap it up, shoot me in slow motion. Okay, we're outside of Pan Rico and Bateño. Uh, I just wanted to slip in a couple more spots that I like, you know, Ecuadorian spots. I love Pan Rico and Bateño. I really like this, like, empanada cart across the street. As I've said many times before, empanada de queso is fundamental. I'd say empanada de queso is, like, should be on the level of a New York hot dog in terms of, like, New York street food. I love this place. The reason that I love this place so much is because of one thing, which is pan de guayaba. So this is, like, a little roasted donut. I don't even know what you would say. This is, like, a, this is a little baked bread stuffed with guava paste and it's a complete delight oh God. with this show sometimes i try to think about these dishes for the people from that country that's like their favorite food i try to just adopt that framework when i go and look at these dishes and think about like what would it be like if i loved this a lot and that's helped me kind of empathize and like you know <laughs> bridge the gap a bit i'm trying to talk about empathizing with food but you know what i'm talking about Thanks to Mercedes, thanks to Jose for letting us film in your trucks. I learned a lot. Um, I hope I represented you well. And uh, what more is there to say? This has been eating with Robert. My name's Rob. Nos vemos pronto. Aún estoy aprendiendo el español, pero es lo que hay. Vamos.